knowledge adventure. Have fun. Get smart. Hello there, fellow YouTubers. Rocky54167 here. And um, here's my first 3D body adventure in over a year. Almost two years since the review was in January 2010. But anyways, MS Allosaurus requested that I uh, do the entire digestive set reference section in 3D Body Adventure, and well, I don't mind doing this, but you said you're doing it for a school project, and the uh, only thing I'm going to say here is please remember these games were made in 1993 and 1994. I'm not saying all the information is inaccurate. I'm saying a lot of it probably still is accurate, and it could be some help, but just double check on the information you see in these videos. Well, enjoy. Here's part one. Prepare for body imaging and exploration. Click directly on the body to begin exploring. To move the body to a new position, click on the rotate body icon. Use the arrow keys or move the mouse to rotate the body. Click the mouse or hit any key to get a cursor. Welcome to the Body Adventure Index. Just click on a letter to access a subject of interest. It is also possible to go directly to a subject by typing the word at any time. The intestine. The intestine is the major part of the digestive system extending from the duodenum to the anus. It is generally divided into the small intestine and the large intestine. The primary function of the small intestine is to complete the digestion of food and then absorb the useful nutrients into the blood. The small intestine consists of three major sections called the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. At the end of the ileum, unabsorbed material containing a large volume of water is passed on to the large intestine. The function of the large intestine is to resorb all the excess water from the undigested food. This process forms feces which are then eliminated. The appendix is a tiny, finger-like process extending from the bottom of the cecum on the right side of the large intestine. The appendix has no known function. Occasionally, the appendix becomes infected, a condition called appendicitis. Appendicitis is generally treated by simply removing the appendix. This is the most common abdominal operation.
the intestine the intestine the intestine the intestine the pancreas the pancreas is an organ with two separate functions first the pancreas plays an important role in the digestion of food the pancreas does this job by making digestive enzymes that are released into the pancreatic duct and then into the small intestine the pancreatic duct usually joins the common bile duct just before it enters the duodenum at the ampulla of Vater. The second function of the pancreas is to make hormones that are released into the blood. The hormones released, insulin and glucagon, both play key roles in the regulation of blood sugar levels. The pancreas. The pancreas is an organ with two separate functions. The large airways. The large airways include the trachea, windpipe, and the bronchi. The first branching point in the respiratory tree is called the carina. The trachea divides at the carina to form the right and left main stem bronchi, which each enter one of the lungs. The photograph above shows the carina. The main stem bronchi then divide to form the lobar bronchi. There are three lobar bronchi on the right side, upper, middle, and lower, and two on the left, upper and lower. The lobar bronchi go on to divide again and again into even smaller bronchi. The photograph above was taken with an instrument called a bronchoscope. Like the endoscopes used to study the digestive system, the bronchoscope has a light and a camera lens at its end. It is different, however, since it is straight and rigid rather than flexible. The bronchoscope is most frequently used to look at the inside of the airways in order to help make a diagnosis. Surgical tools can also be manipulated through the bronchoscope, enabling direct treatment of some medical problems. Another common use of the bronchoscope is to pull out foreign bodies which have been accidentally breathed in. Of interest, most foreign bodies wind up in the right lung because the right main stem bronchus takes a relatively straight path down from the trachea, while the left main stem bronchus branches at a sharper angle. Colon cancer. Colon cancer is one of the most common types of cancer in the U.S. Although there is no single cause for colon cancer, there are two factors that appear to play a large role. These factors are diet and inheritance. The picture above shows the colon, along with a number of chromosomes, to illustrate the fact that inheritance plays a role in the development of colon cancer. Diet, however, appears to be the biggest factor. Rates of digestive tract cancer vary widely in different parts of the world. In China, cancer of the esophagus is quite common, while this disease is very uncommon in the U.S. In Japan, there is a high rate of stomach cancer, another disease that is rare in the U.S. In contrast, the most common digestive tract cancer in the U.S. by far is cancer of the colon. These findings implicate dietary differences as a cause of digestive tract cancers. Most doctors and scientists believe that it is the high-fat, low-fiber Western diet that is to blame for the high incidence of colon cancer. Like other forms of cancer, the prognosis for colon cancer is relatively good if it is discovered early, before it has spread to other parts of the body.
Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is an inflammatory disease that can affect any part of the digestive tract from the mouth to the anus. It is a serious problem that causes many symptoms including pain, fever, diarrhea, and weight loss. The most common site of involvement is the terminal ileum where the small intestine joins the large intestine. The inflammation generally becomes quite severe, sometimes even causing holes, fistulae, to develop in the walls of the intestine. Crohn's disease tends to be patchy in its involvement of the intestine, with areas of disease interspersed with regions of normal intestine. Treatment for Crohn's disease is directed at relieving the inflammation. This is usually successful at controlling the disease. There is neither any known cause for the disease nor any definite cure. Surgery to remove affected segments of the digestive tract is always a last resort because the disease tends to recur in other segments. A related inflammatory bowel disease is ulcerative colitis, UC. UC is different than Crohn's disease in a few important ways. It only affects the colon, sparing the remainder of the digestive system. It affects continuous segments of the colon, so there is never interspersion of normal and diseased intestine. Only the inner lining becomes inflamed with UC, whereas the full thickness of the intestinal wall is affected with Crohn's disease. Treatment is about the same, however, with medicines directed at reducing the inflammation. Of special note, people with UC are at high risk of developing colon cancer, and they must be screened regularly. Sometimes it is prudent to simply remove the colon to prevent colon cancer from occurring. Inside the duodenum. The photograph above shows the inside of a normal duodenum as seen through an endoscope. An endoscope is a flexible tube with both a light and a camera lens at its end. Doctors often use the endoscope to examine the digestive tract when a patient develops vomiting or diarrhea that doesn't resolve as expected. Tiny surgical tools can also be manipulated through the endoscope, allowing treatment of a wide variety of digestive system disorders. Inside the stomach. The picture above shows the inside of the stomach as seen through an endoscope. The endoscope is a flexible tube that allows doctors to look inside the body through a fiber optic lens at the tube's end. By using an endoscope, a doctor is able to look directly at the inside of the digestive tract to make a diagnosis and possibly even to treat the problem. Some of the many problems that can readily be seen with an endoscope include tumors, ulcers, and dilated blood vessels, varices. The endoscope is controlled with handheld dials that direct the tip of the endoscope so that it can be steered into the stomach and beyond. In the picture above, note the thick folds in the muscular stomach walls. This is the appearance of a normal stomach. 